Mondstadt, home of the best wine in the world, and our journey through Teva begins. But it wasn't always like you see it today. This city that now worships the Archon Barsabeto. Wait, no, that's not right. Partobus? No. Wait! I cannot hide anymore! Rejoice! Behold! The god of Animo, Barbados, has descended! Shocked, aren't you? Don't you just want to cry out and rejoice? How does it feel to finally meet the god you've been serving? You told Death Barn! Oh no, not the emergency food. For the last time, Paimon is not emergency food! I really don't care, Paimon. I only wanted to tell the story of the previous animal gods, Decarabian. But since you're all here, why don't you do it yourself? Does Paimon no longer satisfy your Paimonial needs? <laughs> Look at you, sidetracked from the start. If I tell you the story with a performance, will you believe me? Without further ado... Three, two, one! In old Mondstadt transpired the story to be told. Where a tyrant ruled, I met a boy not that old. The lyre he played, and for a song he sought. But storm walls blocked blue sky, he was sincerely distraught. I do so wish to see the birds in flight, said he, his strong eyes filling with light. But his voice was lost in the howling wind's churn, for the whirlwind takes and gives not in return. The true sky and songs that cageless soar, were they not wishes worth fighting for? So the boy turned, extending his hand. Let us cast down the tyrant and his walls from this land. The young boy raised in the flag of revolt, and I threw myself into freedom's tumult. Victorious were we who fought to be free. Gods fell, winds whipped, nations shook violently. In the smoke, a despot met his doom. And we watched as his great tower fell none too soon. Mondstadt began anew, the story passed down, and since then never has another worn its crown. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Is that all you're going to do? Just sing? Hmm, wouldn't be much of a bard if I didn't, now would I? <laughs> you're so cheeky. Wait, 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 wait. There are still things we don't know. Are you sure that there's no more space in your song? Maybe you can give it a shot. Don't mind if I do. Decarabian, also known as the God of Storms, reigns from a tall tower where he is the Lord. His lands extended from far and wide, from Bright Crown Mountains to the Windwheel Highlands, with a major settlement that is now known as the Cecilia Garden. If it was so vast and so lauded, then why would it awaken such hatreds? This was 3,000 years ago, the wolf and the god at war. For reasons we still are yet to know, the war lasted 400 years of the same horror. The land was a frozen wasteland, all due to the power of the wolf god Boreas. With his frozen aura, anyone could be turned into ice. The Caribbean, on the other hand, casted a barrier in his kingdom isolating it from the rest of the land. He fought the abrupt peace to his people, getting them out of the destiny of a frozen kingdom. That they did not like. For what purpose would they call that life? But what other choice did they have? Living without a god, it could be worse than one alone in the wasteland. Largely disconnected from his people, that Caribbean did not seem to be malicious in his actions, but did not understand humanity and their passions. He believed that his people loved him as he loved them, though his understanding of love was not close to how humans experienced it. Love does certainly have different meanings, but for someone like that Caribbean, that love, it was no more than the love of a child for a toy. They couldn't choose where to live or what they would become. At one point, he had even taken on a human lover named Amos, whose bow some of you may have, a female of long white hair. Hunter with a bow. She believed their love was reciprocal, but with time she would be proven wrong. When looking down on his subjects, he believed they were bowing to him out of adoration, respect, and willing submission. 
However, his people were doing so not for the Archon, but because of the harsh winds in the capital that forced them to. Although her illusion of love was broken, she had yet to find her friends that were worth fighting for. With time to avoid that Caribbean's watchful gaze, the Freedom Fighters used the wind bloom as a symbol of solidarity. And so the siege flourished. The rebellion was born, but not of only one force, for the enemies of the god were no few. Now is the time I shall speak about Gunhildr, leader of the clan that would bear her name over time. They managed to escape Mannstadt, even though Borea's frozen storm was hard to survive. Gunhildr's prayers reached a certain elemental spirit. Her prayers, as well as her people's cry for help, gave it the power to create a shelter for them. From there, their faith continued to grow, empowering the spirits even further. The spirit, small and lacking all divine dignity, came and went as the wind changed, eventually meeting a nameless bard who befriends him. He yearned to see the world beyond it and bonded with the nameless wisp of wind. His songs inspired the flames of rebellion as he sang for freedom and dreams, for those ambitions that are worth fighting for. We shall not forget of the warrior of red hair, wanderer friends with the nameless bard and the wind spirit. He was a key part of the revolution. Much is not known about him, just a close resemblance to... What say you, Master Diluc? Interesting. <sighs> forget it. I don't feel like talking about it. <clears throat> As I was saying, the group of the rebellion came together. Disconnected individuals that worked for the same goal of freedom. Amos fought for her people, awoken from her blind love. She realized she was the only one who spoke with sincerity, for he spoke of love, was only accompanied by razor winds. The Bard fought for the freedom to travel with his new friends. Gunhildr fought for her clan and a place to live. The red-haired warrior fought for his new home and companions. And the wind spirits wished to fulfill the ambitions of their friends. Although destiny is not forever kind, the moment dust and fire cease. When the tyrant has died, so had the life of the nameless bard and Amos been extinguished. For it was their group who scaled the tower and ended the life of the Arabian. The life of the bard whose songs devoted to freedom ended in the arms of his friend, the red-head warrior. The throne of the Arabian on Celestia fell that day, and so one could arise anew. The wind spirit ascended to godhood. The first thing he did was to transform himself into the living image of his deceased friend, the nameless bard. The spirit now reborn as who we now know as Fenty. <laughs> Now wielding the power of Animo and using a bow to honor his friend Amos each time he went to battle. In that moment, the redhead warrior turned his back to the new god, for reasons we still don't know. Perhaps he felt angry when his friend turned into the very thing they seek to destroy. Or perhaps because he assumed the living image of his dead friend. Only time is going to tell. As for the other member of the party, Gunhildr, her prayers became stronger now, following the newborn god to the Cider Lake where the actual Mannstadt is located to this day. Venti spoke with Boreas, with the death of the Arabian, and seeing the suffering his frosted winds brought to the people. The wolf let his body die, imbuing the land with his power to make it flourish. That left Venti as the only remaining god to become an Archon, taking a seat on Celestia. However, the death of the body, it doesn't mean the end of that god, as his spirit still lingers near his temple as Boreas agreed to help the newborn god to make Mannstadt a better place. So remember this every time you walk the streets of Mannstadt. Freedom is not a gift, you fight for it. Like someone used to say, What does freedom really mean when demanded of you by a god? That's right, so fight for your dreams, for the freedom of choosing your life because those wishes are the ones we're fighting for. So, how did I do? You really do have some wonderful abilities. Someone like you is going to end up getting written into a bard's poem. Alas, I've really not the time to compose a melody for you at this moment. Hmm, it's decided then. Paimon will write an adventure story as well. We'll call it Paimon's Happiness. A happy ending attracts the readers, after all. 
Nope, 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 nope. Not getting paid enough for this. See ya! Ugh.